got Marvel, we've got DC. And let me tell you, some of them are just copying off each other as if they're taking a test. Sup, Chaos here? And I'm completely shocked with the amount of copycat characters that I'm only now hearing about. You might know some of them, but others, I just had no clue. Like, what? So we're gonna hop into our first copycat characters, Aquaman and Namor. You know, just the boys, two mermen hanging out, being all buddy-buddy fishy and... <laughs> Ew. Okay, maybe Fishy's not good. Seriously though, I'm gonna need you to hold on to your square pants because the one who's super popular, Aquaman, was actually a copy with Namor being created first. He actually spawned in on Marvel Comics number one and this is way before I was a fetus, like before I was conceived. You know, I think C and I think Aquaman, the king of the ocean, but no, he's like a copy and paste motherfucker. He, he's, he spawned in only because of Namor. Uh, Namor doesn't even look cool at all he's got strange ears and come to think of it they're, they're both jacking each other's swag they're both king of atlantis they do the yapping to other sea creatures they both have that giant golden fork and of course their drip is literally dripping because they're wearing the same outfit it's all scaly and whatnot <laughs> but if you ask me dc did a, a much better job in creating the better sea hero dude ocean guy dweller i mean it could have been marketing they could have paid the elites or something i don't know but seriously if you think about it aquaman does come off more hero like he is one of the founding members of the justice league as well so i mean he gets some some clout from those fuckers. and you've got jason momoa i definitely think uh he he's helped a lot too that long luscious hair speaking of other characters that helped out their main hero who also sports some nice luscious hair catwoman and black cat oh yeah no by far these these two are my favorite <clears throat> For some reason, I don't know, I don't like leather that much. <laughs> but I do find it kind of strange how they're from two different universes and they're both cat burglars. They love shiny things. I mean, what woman doesn't? Oh, wait a minute. They both also don't have superpowers. <laughs> hmm, suspicious. But I mean, hey, it's obvious who came first, right? Oh shit, wait, you, you don't know? Uh, I mean, Catwoman is one of them old motherfuckers who appeared in Batman issue one in 1940. Yeah, we're gonna have to blow some dust off that puss. And then many years later, 1979, Black Cat decided to break into the comic book light. Wait, pause, another comparison. Felicia Hardy, Selena Kyle, Selena, Felicia. Hmm, they share the same amount of syllables. That's kind of suspicious. It really feels like Marvel's got their binoculars out at night just spying on DC for some ideas. So hey, drum roll here, please. I'm gonna have to give the best cat burglar award to Catwoman. I mean, hey, come on. We have like the best people playing her. Oh, <coughs> Halle Berry. <coughs> oh my, wow, that is amazing. Um, And then we've got <coughs> even better. Dude, Anne Hathaway was actually supposed to be playing Black Cat in Spider-Man 4 that's, you know, not released. But hey, since that movie never happened, Catwoman wins. And we'll be seeing a lot more unexpected copycat characters throughout this video. Some that just seem uncanny and ones that are just, wow, that should never be a thing. As we fly straight into our next comparison, Superman and Hyperion. I mean, clearly we know who the copycat character is. Do, do we not know? It's Hyperion. Okay, he's definitely a copycat of Superman. And hey, there's a lot of reasons why he's a copy. Not just because they look the same with the cape and he's got the same amount of super strength. It goes way deeper. It's actually shocking how a lot of people don't know Superman is like the first ever superhero. <laughs> like ever. I mean, 1938 was a nice year. I was there. And even though Hyperion popped out the pussy pages of comics in 1969, his origin story literally might be photocopied, hijacked, control C, control V, cloned, mimicked. Co like literally just copied straight up. Someone better get their lawyer ready. You know, as a young boy, Hyperion was sent to a different planet completely before his planet blew up. He was sent to Earth 6161. Oh, and the way he gets his power isn't from veggies. He gets it from the sun. Hmm, wow, doesn't <coughs> Superman <coughs> do the same thing? <coughs> I mean, Marvel playing kind of scummy, shameless activity. They just kind of stole Superman and made it their own. They wanted their own Superman character, I guess, and gave him a different belt and name. I guess real question is who would win in an actual fight, Hyperion or Superman? You can put your guesses in the comments and you guys can find it out. I don't know why I'm doing this voice, but really, like who actually likes Hyperion? I. <laughs> but next up, I've got some characters that everyone seems to like a lot. <laughs> Clayface and Sandman. Oh uh, yeah, no, these f***ers are kind of hated. I mean, the heart-touching moment in Spider-Man 3 with Sandman and his daughter, that was that was okay, that was acceptable. And wait, Clayface does have like a pretty sad backstory. Wait, hold, hmm, maybe I do have a heart. And so do they. I mean, obviously these fucking earthbenders are a bit different. One's clay, one's sand, but when it comes to their powers and just sometimes action shots in the comics, they look strikingly similar, morphing their arms and legs into different weapons, whether it's spike balls or axes, Sandman being on a bit of a dry side as Clayface is a lot more moist. Yeah, say it with me, moist. He's He's got more uh, f 
Solidity. Is that a word? And hey, I bet you would have never guessed that Clayface was the first, appearing in good old 1940, and Sandman escaping the hourglass in 1963. See, Marvel's still in their sneaky sh I mean, in a weird way, I kind of like the whole flowy sand effects better. Dude, the VFX team was probably struggling in post-production, trying to get all those particles in the right spot. And again, with their broken backgrounds, I mean, these characters are very much their own. I do like Clayface's broken theater background, and I especially love Clayface in the Harley Quinn show, so, ooh, yeah, we're gonna have to go with the original Clayface being the better version of the two. I I'm not a Marvel hater, I swear. But you might think I am with these next two, Bullseye and Deadshot. Clearly, one of these guys is the best villain Daredevil has ever had, but I feel like he's not even known as much. I mean, Bullseye was portrayed in that live Ben Affleck movie, which, oh, that was kind of dog shit. The goofy Bullseye tattoo on Colin Farrell's head is just insane. He was playing an Avatar Aang before Avatar Aang. I do see a lot of Deadshot, you know, Will Smith being Deadshot, um, before slapping that one dude on stage. Also, I've heard of that shot recently because of the whole Suicide Squad game where you, you had to play him and kind of endure that terrible story mission. Oh, he's just a lot more relevant as of recently. But hey, they showed off a better Bullseye character in Netflix's Daredevil. Definitely did a better job than Baldy over there. But it really does seem like DC is just taking the, the wins, the cake, because Deadshot was the original with Bullseye copying him. I mean, hey, they essentially have the same powers. These motherfuckers don't miss. I mean, one one's gonna miss here because we're trying to see who the better version is. And you guys can decide on this one, but let me just remind you, in the Suicide Squad, Deadshot has a goal. You know, he's always out there trying to help his daughter or his family. Whereas Bullseye is a complete fucking psychopath. Just know there's a crazy scene of him on an airplane with an old lady. That, that's all you gotta know. The early 2000s was crazy. Shit, speaking of crazy, the next comparison is literally cloned. Like, like there's no way in hell this is legal. These are two heroes who like to dress up as cats. And no, we're not talking furries. If anything, they're super dangerous. We've got Red Lion, <laughs> like who the hell is that? And Black Panther. And I mean, if it's not obvious enough already, um, <laughs> Red Lion is the copycat. <laughs> hey, see what I did there? Cause copy is like a cat and okay. Kind of funny because Red Lion's damn near Gen Z appearing in a Deathstroke comic in 2016. And yeah, Black Panther, he's daddy in this situation appearing in 1966 in a fantastic four comic Jeez, there's no way i just called this dude daddy i mean look at his fighting skills though but hey like there's no comparison here like everyone's familiar with black panther like dude people were ooh bomb bang in the streets of new york okay just randomly you see a homie you do the pose and by the amazing performance by chad r.i.p i would say he's one of the world's most recognizable heroes but if we want to talk comparisons i mean Red Lion is literally an African president and a dictator. Similar to Black Panther, I mean, minus the whole dictating part, but Red Lion goes bar for bar copying his suit exactly. I, I get that your name's like Lion and stuff, but like it's literally a Black Panther suit painted red, which fuck, I mean, I do like the red color better, but like it's it's the same. It looks, <laughs> oh, Marvel is somewhere hiding and laughing with joy right now. But if I have to pick a clear winner who the best counterpart is, I, I'm gonna have to give it to good old, Black Panther. I mean, dude, vibranium suit. We've seen him run in the movies, dude. Like, and plus, Red Lion, who? Like, seriously, I've never really heard of him. But for the next two heroes, you might be surprised. I mean, it is a clear copycat. They pretty much do the same exact thing. One's a bug, though, so it's okay. Just, just try not to step on him. We've got Ray Palmer and Hank Pym. And yeah, if you don't already know, like, their, their real names and whatnot. Ant-Man and the Atom. Even though these two are short kings for life, doesn't mean they're not huge characters. I mean, significantly, I would say Ant-Man is gargantuan in popularity. I mean, that is all thanks to the MCU though, <coughs> but <coughs> he is a clear copy of, uh, of the Atom. See, now there's many details about how these characters have different backstories, regardless of having the same abilities, you know, shrinking down to like minuscule size. But both these characters were created out of scientific interest. The whole science fiction aspect to it really reminds me of like how the Hulk injected himself with gamma radiation, or even with Peter Parker being super smart and dealing with chemicals and whatnot. With each character, Ant-Man and Adam dealing with a lot of different tech has always been interesting interesting to me, even though if my editing software crashes, I, I hate all technology. Still, these guys manage to have things work for them, you know, sometimes, unless you're trapped in the quantum realm. What a f***ing idiot. But a fun fact, Ant-Man, not in the MCU, but in the comics, was a founding member of the Avengers, while Adam actually joins the Justice League later on. And hey, I, I mean, I have to say it, like, come on, there's no way the Avengers could have defeated Thanos without Ant-Man and his little strategy of getting 
trapped on accident. But if we're talking powers, the Atom has size and matter alteration via his belt. He's got really nice combat experience and genius levels of intellect. The, the list for Ant-Man's powers is excruciatingly long. He's got brains and brains for days. He's got a whole ass suit and not just a belt. He's got his size shifting, but he has the ability to transfer his size shifting ability to other beings and objects, you know, like making a, an ant huge. He can manipulate pin particles. He knows how to maintain his strength even at microscopic level. His helmet allows him to telepathically communicate with ants. Oh yeah, let me not forget. Superhuman strength, stamina, durability, and yeah, it looks like Ant-Man is just pretty much OP at this point. So even though Ant-Man might be a copycat here, he's he stands on top. Oh man, size really does matter when it comes to like these comparisons here. I mean, usually one's super popular and when the other is just not. But this next one might be a bit of a stretch because hey, their powers are completely different. Uh, you wouldn't even assume that I would make this comparison. We've got good old Spidey, Spider-Man, of course, and wait for it. Um, we, yeah, uh, Sailor Moon. <laughs> You're like, yo, chaos, what, what the fuck? These two aren't a direct copycat, but one influences the other pretty heavily. A lot of people like to recognize Spider-Man as a high school student, a teenager, even though that is just a small part of him in the comics, the MCU really touched base on this a lot more with Tom Holland, but now we dive into Sailor Moon. I don't want to butcher her name, but before Sailor Moon was Sailor Moon, she was a typical high school student in Japan doing her daily juggling of life pretty much but one day after taking the wrong path she stumbles upon a talking cat <laughs> like she's sabrina the fucking witch or something and trust me no this cat just spoke english or japanese really it wasn't a radioactive spider but i mean hey the cat could have been radioactive if it could speak and instead of the cat biting her the cat starts to explain it and convince her that she's one of the sailor sinji for love and justice oh yeah overall one of the most well-rounded wholesome characters ever and we all know like the theme song and like the, the cool transformation move yeah she becomes a superhero and i need you to fucking listen okay heroes can wear dresses okay they had the coolest poses everything with the theme song but just like spidey she has to balance the regular life of school and, and relationships while also fighting crime and saving the literal world from evil beings i wouldn't really expect sailor moon to be like a copy like their backstories are very similar but if you think about it spidey does have like a big influence on other characters similar to this one as well and hey if you can name some of those characters let me know there's, there's a lot of them but for our next copycat characters it'll kind of blow your mind because i never realized this until now but a character from 1940 has some pretty close similarities like extremely close to another who's in marvel we've got the boy wonder robin himself and the winter soldier bucky Barnes. Now, obviously, one has like a cooler uh, alias name. <laughs> Come on. And when I got the news about this, I was on the floor. I had no idea that Robin was the first ever sidekick to any superhero ever. Like, hey, that deserves some claps, okay? First ever water boy for a hero. <laughs> Batman was a fucking billionaire who needed help. Damn near an assistant. <laughs> Let me shit on him a little bit. Like, oh, the dude no, was wearing no, tights. No. But don't worry, my boy leveled the fuck up, okay? Like, he started being all badass and stuff when he became Nightwing. Oh, and especially in Teen Titans, he was kicking ass. Oh, yeah, he was cool there. Oh, and Trump that Robin was a huge deal back in the 1940s. His popularity skyrocketed because obviously it was meant for kids. Kids read the comics and they saw themselves as Robin pretty much fighting alongside Batman. But because of this popularity, you had motherfuckers on their radar. Marvel was cooking up some heat, even though it was damn near copy. Because hey, one year later, Captain America got his little psychic buddy, Bucky Barnes. Yo, his suit back then was pretty fucking clean, even though like it, it looks like Robin. The mask and everything. And this is something huge, okay? because later on, Bucky becomes the Winter Soldier. Oh, how convenient, because we've got Robin, Dick Grayson, later becoming Nightwing. You know, these two were definitely having like a looks maxing competition. And, and wait, hold on, it gets even crazier. Marvel had fucking spies in the DC offices, because every move that Robin made, Bucky Barnes would soon follow. With the story of Jason Todd being resurrected, he then turns into Red Hood, becoming one of Batman's enemies. <laughs> so, you know, like Captain America also needs a, an enemy who is also his dead sidekick, Bucky Barnes. I mean, we can see all this in the MCU movie. I mean, yo, that movie was absolute gas though. Oh yeah. But the Winter Soldier being a villain, even though he was con mind controlled, himself and Red Hood end up being anti-heroes using guns, unlike Batman and Captain America. Oh, and a little quick timeline, okay? The whole Red Hood and Winter Soldier storylines were three months apart with the whole Red Hood story airing first. I bet you had dudes in the Marvel office trying to speed run their drawings. And yeah, I know I'm making jokes and all, but like I have no hate towards any of these characters. I, I fucking love Winter the soldier especially in that movie robin is super sick in all the animated stuff i just wish they did him justice in the live action at least i must be living under a rock because this next one was an obvious copycat one that everyone likes to talk about too we've got the good old billionaire playboy philanthropist 
who lives in Gotham, Batman, and the copycat character who's also a Dark Knight, who so happens to wear white, Moon Knight. Dude, I was dying on the floor when people say Moon Knight is Marvel's Batman. I... Wow, I didn't really think about that. I am very <coughs> uncultured because I've only really heard of Moon Knight when, you know, he had that Disney Plus show. I, before that, no idea. I mean, come on, they're both vigilantes. They have similar suits. I mean, mine is the whole symbol on their chest. And a lot of the time they're called insane or psycho. I've heard this a lot with Batman. Like he's a man who dresses like a bat at night. Of course, there's some differences. Moon Knight believing he gets powers from the, the moon. He's also got an identity disorder. While Batman is truly Batman, even when he is Bruce Wayne, you know, during the day, he's just itching to go out at night and, and, and kick the ass of crime. But for similarities, these characters are damn near the same. Cause honestly, Batman also gets his power from the moon. Like, well, kind of, he only goes out at night. They both utilize high tech equipment. They're expert detectives, even though Batman's the world's greatest. And of course their fighting style, both martial arts experts. Obviously when it comes to copycats and who's the better one, I mean, you guys get to decide this, but I'm definitely gonna have to give it to the Dark Knight himself. Batman. I do like Batman's got fucking aura, okay? The whole multi personality thing with Moon Knight, that, that's just kind of corny. Dude's just gonna speak with a random British accent for no reason. Like, we, we're good. And I think I'm good when I think I covered almost all of them. But hey, if I did miss any superhero copycats, because there are, there are a lot of them, let me know in the comments below. And I would love to make another video about this. So if you would like to see that too, smash that like button. Let's go for this like goal and click here on screen for another video about copycats that are literally copy and paste.